So, I just woke up in the middle of the night with tens of alerts and errors on all my work communication channels. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Well, it looks like the whole internet was down again. And this time, Cloudflare is having one of its existential moments. For those of you keeping track, this is the second major incident, bringing down pretty much the entire web in less than a month. A few weeks back, AWS went down and took half the internet with it. US East 1, their oldest and most popular region, because nobody bothers to change the default settings when launching EC2 instances, had a major outage for the third time in five years. The implications of the failure were massive, with services across finance, healthcare, transportation and entertainment all going down at once. Now, once again, most of the internet is down, and even basic need services like ChatGPT are unavailable, leaving Vibe coders around the world in shambles, forced to actually think for once. To their surprise, this turns out to be an extremely difficult operation when you've spent the last year outsourcing basic if statements to a chatbot. Around noon, UTC time, Cloudflare started experiencing an internal service degradation which had immediate implications worldwide. Then, reassurance messages started to pour in, and it later turned out that it was all caused by a larger-than-normal feature file used by a component called Boot Manager, which is in charge of isolating automated or artificial traffic from human traffic at scale. All in all, it took them a few hours to work through the issues, which is to be expected considering the scale at which Cloudflare is operating. So while we all can probably live with a few hours of service interruption, there is a much more valuable lesson to be learned here. Cloudflare, for those unfamiliar with it, is one of those companies you never think about until everything stops working. It handles DNS, CDN, DDoS protection, SSL termination, caching, and just about every other acronym you've ever pretended to understand in a network diagram. If Amazon Web Services is the compute layer of the internet, Cloudflare is the bouncer, making sure weird geeks wearing shorts are not allowed in the VIP area. Now, in all seriousness, Cloudflare managed to become one of the most critical pieces of internet infrastructure by sitting directly between users and the servers they're trying to reach. It operates as a reverse proxy, meaning all incoming traffic is routed through Cloudflare's global network before it even touches your origin server. That allows them to offer powerful services like global load balancing, web application firewalls, rate limiting, and a lot of other useful security features you don't have to worry about. And they do it really well, at very affordable prices. So naturally, when you have a service handling all the boring, risky work you don't want to worry about, and you can pay them less than a pro subscription for an AI coding assistant, everybody will sign up. And this brings us to the core problem. We all moved our products to the decentralized cloud, but now we all use the same three vendors to run them. Amazon Web Services, and preferably US East One for compute, Cloudflare for routing and protection, and probably some sort of managed database because no one wants to worry about replication or backup windows anymore. And this is the best case scenario, because these days we can do much worse. So we pick the default regions, the default plans, and the default tools that promise to scale automatically, and we call it a day. But all we do is just buy convenience and comfort. This might work for apps with low impact on daily life. However, when you apply the same lazy architecture to banking platforms, healthcare systems, public services, or anything remotely critical, things can turn dark really fast. The irony is that cloud computing was supposed to remove the risk for these kind of outages. Instead, we got to a point where if one of the tech giants sneezes, the entire web catches a cold. But we can't blame Cloudflare for this incident because, after all, they do an absurd amount of work for very little money. They are not a problem. The problem is the illusion that our systems are resilient because we're using cloud-native tools, when in fact we've just centralized failure behind nicer dashboards. What's even more problematic is that the new generation of developers doesn't know how to build for failure. They grew up in the comfort of readily available cloud tools, and their knowledge ends at going through configuration wizards. The reality is that because of these tools and the advent of AI, a lot of knowledge is being lost fast. And, in a few generations, we'll understand our software about as well as we understand how the pyramids were built. If you enjoyed my rambling about software topics, you should check out one of these videos next. Please don't forget to click on all the buttons YouTube is throwing at you these days, and until next time, thank you for watching.